Good evening, everyone. We are back with another case of gynecology. Today's case is a, about Turner syndrome. A patient is a 15-year-old female who had complaints of amenorrhea, absence of pubic and axillary hair, and absence of breast enlargement. So a little brief about the patient. The patient's mother was worried that her periods had not yet started. Her older sister started at 13 years and her younger sister had just started her periods at 12. But this patient was 15 years and had not yet had her minar. She was embarrassed at school as her friends are always discussing their periods. And she has not told them that she has not yet had one. And she has reached all her developmental milestones as a child, although has not started a teenage growth spurt and is the second shortest girl. She has a normal diet and eats normally with her family and denies any eating disorder. And she's active in sports, but does not exercise to excess. And uh, about her academic performance, it's about average. Although she does not do as well as her siblings and is not in the top streams. Medical history, she was born at 38 weeks by spontaneous vaginal delivery and has never had any particular medical problems. And no medication history was found. Objective data on examination, she is 120 centimeter and weighs 59 kg. She has no abnormal facial features, but has a wide carrying angle, cubitus valgus and a wide neck. So cubitus valgus is a, a congenital condition in which the angle is slightly wider in the uh, elbow area, as you can see here. So this is the normal uh, condition where we have a slight angle here. In valgus, it is wider, and cubitus varus is the opposite condition in which the angle is pretty low. So the angle varies to approximately 3 degrees to 29 degrees. There is no apparent breast development, and the nipples appear widely spaced. No axillary hair growth is apparent. Abdominal examination is unremarkable. The external genitalia are normal, though no pubic hair is visible. Internal examination is not performed. So the investigations involved her follicle stimulating hormone, which was uh, pretty high. Luteinizing hormone is also high. Her estradiol and prolactin levels are normal. Specialized diagnostic tests performed was karyotype, also known as chromosomal analysis. So it was found to be 45 XO. Uh, this is a test which is used to uh, observe the chromosomal count and morphology under a light microscope. And transabdominal ultrasound report. The uterus appears normal size and antiverted. The endometrium appears smooth and thin, measuring 2.4 mm. Both ovaries are visualized and appear to be of small volume. No follicles are seen. Assessment, uh, the diagnosis on the basis of subjective data, objective data, lab parameters, and diagnostic tests. Uh, the diagnosis is typical of Turner syndrome. This genetic condition is associated with the absence of one X chromosome occurring in approximately 1 in 2,500 live female births. It is confirmed on chromosomal analysis, also known as karyotype. Clinical features observed in Turner syndrome, webbed neck, broad chest with widely spaced nipples, wide carrying angle or cubitus valgus, short stature, maximum 150 centimeter without treatment, low set ears, hypoplastic nails, and hypertension may be observed. So web neck, broad chest with widely spaced nipples, cubitus valgus and short stature was all observed in this patient. Need of therapy to prevent further complications and to improve patient's quality of life. This, these are the signs and symptoms of clinical features that is usually observed in Turner syndrome, which involves web neck. So the neck is like broad and stocky, we can say, a short stature high arced palate, low set ears, and a low hairline. So there is a very short forehead, and the hairline is pretty low. A bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, usually we have a tricuspid valve, but in Turner syndrome patients, uh, during the development in the fetal stage, the tricuspid valve fuses, the leaflets fuse together, and they form a bicuspid aortic valve. Coactation of aorta, also known as na narrowing of the aorta, especially in the area of ductus ligamentum. 
then the diagnosis is performed usually by karyotype and ovarian dysgenesis is seen uh, which involves amenorrhea and infertility lack of pubic hair and short fourth and fifth metacarpal bones widely spaced nipples and limb fading of hands and feet is seen the hypoplastic nails that i mentioned earlier is usually due to the limb fedema about this condition turner syndrome also known as 45x or 45xo is a genetic disorder caused by a sex chromosome monosomy so monosomy is the lack of uh, one chromosome and presence of only one x chromosome compared to the two sex chromosomes xx or xy in most people and it only affects women signs and symptoms vary among those affected typically those affected do not develop menstrual periods or breasts without hormone treatment and are unable to have children without reproductive technology heart defects diabetes and low thyroid hormone occur in the disorder more frequently than average turner syndrome is not usually inherited rather it occurs during formation of the reproductive cells in a parent or in early cell division during development while most people have 46 chromosomes people with turner syndrome usually have 45 in some or all cells the chromosomal abnormality is often present in just some cells in which case it is known as turner syndrome with mosaicism so mosaicism uh, only some of the cells would be having the xo type and the other cells would be normal in this case less severe clinical features is noticed um, in these cases the symptoms are usually fewer and possibly none occur at all diagnosis is based on physical signs and genetic testing management for this patient management of turner syndrome should be carried out in a specialist referral center psychological the implications of turner syndrome diagnosis are devastating for the child and for the family the absence of periods may be stigmatizing and the long term lack of fertility is a very serious concept that may be difficult for a young girl to comprehend medical the short stature should be treated to enable the girl to reach her full height potential human growth hormone is given to achieve this estrogen therapy initially with ethinyl estradiol enables secondary sexual characteristics of breast development and pubic and axillary hair to develop cyclical progestogens are added later to induce a withdrawal bleed for social reasons and to protect the endometrium from hyperplasia or malignancy in the long term some form of estrogen therapy then needs to be continued until the time of natural menopause to prevent early onset osteoporosis in this girl so withdrawal bleed is a uh, kind of like a period but it is it has less blood and it is less severe with less cramps and progestogen is usually given to protect the endometrium since if we give only estrogen for therapy it might result in endometrial cancer fertility fertility options are available with ovum donation and hormonal support with this we will conclude today's session thank you for watching and please share this video thank you